What's up, Terrifics? Here at Toy Fair 2019, I've got Anthony Snyder. You know him from Selling Heroes, and of course, this gentleman, Todd McFarlane. Yeah, good to see you, McFarlane again. Toys. Good to see you. Must be another Toy Fair that you and I are together again. So uh, this is about a dozen for us. So it's cool, right? I like the old timers, that, yeah. right? The people who've been around this industry for 10, 20 years. It's awesome, right? So. The, the, my first toy fair was when I was nine years old when my dad had an Aurora game, Jimmy the Greek's uh, football yeah. thing. Right. Yeah, and Don Adams was uh, doing a stand-up routine that night. And I remember, uh, I loved Don Adams. He was great. He was awesome. And that was in the old toy fair building uh, down on 23rd Street, right? Yeah. Here's yeah. what I know. The people that I see that have been around for 20 years in this industry, that means they're survivors, right? The people who come and go, they're flashing the pans. Like we've seen dozens, dozens of those. The people who just grind it out and through thick and thin, good years and bad years, they're still here. I just go look at you, dude. Right? I mean, it's like it's like Kiss, the Kiss band. You don't have to be the best musician, but they're still here after decades. You got to tip your hat to them, right? Who cares whether they're the best songs and the best musicians? They're just good. Bunch of people have been grinding out toys, cheap plastic goods. That's the business I'm in. Right. So I, wait a sec. I think you just knock Kiss a little. No. No, no. Well, they're not. No, I'm saying the opposite. I'm saying the lyrics. opposite. I'm saying the people. No, no. People say they're not good musicians. They don't sing. I don't care. They're still on stage. They're amazing. 40, they're showmen th for 50 years. It's amazing. They're they're, they're swimming in a pool of sharks and they're still alive 50 years does later. That, does that impress you? It, it impresses me. Impre long longevity is is survival. And when you're fighting wars and you're a warrior, yeah. to to be able to say that you've gone to war dozens of times and you're still alive, I tip my my hat, even if you're the enemy, I tip my hat that you survived all those battles. It's impressive, especially it impressive. in this industry, entertainment as well. Right. I mean, the fact that the Rolling Stones still do concerts is unbelievable. Right. Right. So Kiss is launching their farewell tour this this year. Again? Wh Actually. <laughs> <laughs> Another. Wait, would you ever do a Kiss line? I did. You did. You did. Right. Yeah. That's why I like Gene. I go, Gene, come on. And Gene was awesome. Gene Gene used to do stuff, and this is, and I'll tell some Gene stories here. Gene would go, he had a go to sentence that would be, that'd be a million bucks. And I'd go, Gene, I'm not going to give you a million bucks. That's ridiculous. And then eventually I, I'd see him with other people, and he'd go, that'd be a million bucks. And then I, eventually I asked him one day, I go, Gene, well, I don't understand why you asked for a million bucks. He goes, because every now and then somebody gives it to me, dude. <laughs> so he goes, what's the worst that happened? I come down for my number. So he was... And that's a big comic book guy, and he has a great comic book art collection. He's always tried to keep the kids' art yeah. that was published in yeah. the no, when, 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 like when, when Because I had to get approval when I go to his place and hung out with him. When nobody was around, Gene Simmons did what most of us do, is he turned into a nine-year-old boy, yep. and I would become a nine-year-old boy, and we would we would talk about Fantastic Four, and we'd geek, and then as soon as somebody come into the room, he'd have to put on the persona, right? right? Barry Bonds was a little bit like that, too. Mm -hmm. When you just got him one-on-one, -on -one, at least for me, he was a this, and then as soon as the third guy came in, you know, a little bit of, oh, I got to go back into my thing here. So I, I, I go, no, 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 they're all, what do you mean? Steve, Steve Spielberg, uh, James Cameron. I've been, I've been in rooms away from people, and they literally instantly revert to nine-year-old kids, which is, I think, the reason they're successful, because they never lost the wonder of being a child, right? And they just somehow figure out how to do that for a career. Pretty amazing. Yeah, that nostalgia zone, I call it. That that, that sure. moment where you were 9, 10, 11, 12 years old, that, that, that's when I was reading 20 Cent Marvels. And that's where I have this passion for what I do in buying and selling comics and art and have the love for the characters. Yeah. It's that, that, that little boy within me that I've never lost touch of, yeah. that you're describing, yeah. that I've made a business and, you know, and I employ the people I am. Now, sometimes, doing. may I say, sometimes the ladies don't get it. And well, it can be well, a little, my, my it can be a little it. frustrating <laughs> sometimes to the date because they're like, I don't understand where you guys got to collect all this stuff and whatever. Because I don't know what the equivalent is, right? Remember, I, years ago, I bought the Maguire baseball. I'm going, what's the, what's the female version of the Maguire ball? Like, I there is none. There is none. That's uh, right. There, that's right. So we're Barbie going, prototypes. No, no, there is no none. it's not no, the same. They don't answer, have the same feeling. Is right. Hey. So, so there's some weird thing about us in collecting. What about uh, uh, Spawn? Where's Spawn at? 
the movie? Yeah. Uh, right now, it's being polished by another writer director. Uh, you know, from from the script that uh, we handed him, he's supposed to be done with it here in a few weeks and then once we sort of go back and forth and tighten it up a little bit then we're just we're going into Hollywood and we're going to get a yes or no Here, here's here's what I can tell you I have people with money on the sidelines there 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 are people that are going to help me make this movie the question is do we go into Hollywood make a deal with Hollywood and then go and make the production and then come back or do I take the outside money go make it and then come back to Hollywood either way the movie's coming it's not so it's not a it's a not a if it's a when I just think that it would be better for the process if we could attach one of the studios in advance and then and then go put it up because then we'd be able to make an announcement of the release date and you know a couple things that matter to the fans knowing that it's coming instead of making it and then trying to get the release date later so is it harder to get an actor attached if you're uh, not with a film studio yes and, and and the reason is because the their lawyers and agents and stuff will say up oh, there's a little bit of an unknown we don't so we don't know if they're going to get a deal if they do get a deal how many theaters they're going to get it released and, and all, you know what kind of advertising campaign blah 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 and so th- they like the they like the sure thing right and so there's leverage on the studio side they can give you less because they know that it may retain some of the the talent that is either on or is going to about to come on to it so you said uh, you know in a different interview i saw that you you had you maintained creative control of the cartoon yeah. because you were in charge of it yeah. and you had to release some of that creative about yeah. the movie yeah. and there was there was a difference in how those two projects succeeded and and you you know well, just you, the outcome of them the yeah. outcome so I'm, I'm not saying one was any better or worse i'm just saying that if they let you basically pick the the ice cream flavor you're going to pick the one that you like best right? right so it doesn't mean it's a better flavor than anything else so i my bent for what i want to do with spawn is is a lot more serious and a lot more dark right. than than what like people the are like show yeah correct yes. than than what people are seeing traditionally in pg-13 superhero movies yeah. that's all i'm saying it's just going to be a dead serious r-rated scary creepy movie done right. period and i'm not wavering from that and if yeah. and if at some point they just go no the only way this gets made is if we can Convert that, then we're never going to make it. I mean, it's I I'm, I'm not giving because I'll I'll go and big board and steal the money. I'll get it made. Don't worry about it. I'll get it made. Now, do you consider yourself a hero guy or a horror guy most of it? Which do you tend towards? Uh, uh, for movies? No, for comics. Like you know, for comics. You know, I'm a hero guy. I love the superhero comics. I mean, yeah, you're like. I want to make this an R-rated uh, uh, um, horror I, you know, guy. I, I like superheroes, but I but I did have a bent on liking the comic books that were odd, mm-hmm. right? So, so I I I know I was drawn to books like uh, Shang Chi, Master of Kung Fu. Right. Uh, Tomb of Dracula to me yeah. was like the greatest the thing that, stuff, that, right? yeah, this, that was out there. So some of the odd comics that were out there, I was sort of drawn to them because they were just slightly different and maybe just my personality on top of it. So I, I, I liked the other superheroes. I mean, I did Superman, Batman, I mean, uh-huh. Spider-Man, I mean, Hulk, right? You know, what I mean, I did all that stuff. I just, well, Hulk was your first job in Marvel, right? Uh, no. My, the very first job I ever did was 1985, coming out of college, was this small book called uh, Coyote, Steve Englehart's oh, Coyote. Coyote yeah. and then, oh, a, no, no, it wasn't even Coyote. It was the backup. The backup story? It's, yeah, that's the, literally starting in the mailroom, right? Yeah. So you're going, what's the book that doesn't sell? And put them as a backup in the book that doesn't it's sell. So, yeah. That was the mailroom, and then and it started yeah, I've, I've had a lot of Infinity Ink pages that you did, too, and stuff now, like that. Th- so, so they canceled the Coyote very quickly. I was now backup. <laughs> on the street but the but the, but the thing that changed in those four months was that you could now send off your samples and instead of saying hey I'm an amateur I would love to be in this business I could say I've been working for Marvel Comics for four months and here's my sample the samples were equally disturbing and bad but one was a professional submission and one was an amateur and so as soon as you said you got you've been working for Marvel it went to the top of the pile okay. and I was able to get another job and took off that was infinity and then it <laughs> And then I've just been employed ever since. What? How many issues of that did you do? About 30? 
Yeah. No, it didn't last that long. that long. But it was, it was a lot. Roy Thomas was the writer. Mm -hmm. I eventually left DC because I thought Roy Thomas, as much as he liked me, would have kept me employed, seemed like forever. Great but guy. I, I get along it, with him very well. So what I wanted to understand was, am I in this business because of Roy Thomas or am I in this business because I actually have something that is of value to more than one person? And so I wanted to go and branch out. And then I went over to Marvel. I did something called Spitfire. This is this is the thing. Let me tell you, anybody out there, they 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 said you can't do that style that I was doing on Infinity, right? They said it's too wacky, but we're going to give you this job, and you've got eight days. Now normally you have 30. Yeah. They gave it to me in eight days, and they go, sorry, but here it is, eight days. I did it in five. Now was it the best thing I ever did? No, but just them going, wow, the kid can hit a deadline in a deadline-driven business. Yeah. That's 51 percent. This, like, you can draw like Michelangelo all you want, right. but if you can't hit a deadline, you're a cover artist. That's all That's you right. are at best, right? No, I represent so, some of them and I sell their art for them because they can't meet deadlines anymore. Oh, right. Line. So, right. So that's what I tell people. You don't have to be the best. If there's 10 people in a room and nine of them can't meet a deadline and you're the 10th best artist, but you can, yeah. you're, you're the most valuable thing in that room that to somebody. going to give you that job. Yes. His job's yes. So just yes. be a grinder. Nothing wrong with being, right? I agree. Just be a grinder. You, you see football players and, and, and hockey players. And, That's what I was going to say, hockey. Right. The, the, the guys can have 20-year careers because they just grind it. So you don't have to be the best. Yeah. You don't have to score the most points. You just have to basically be a dog chewing on a bone and never let it go. Be Pat for a beak. Yes. And Pat was good on top, so Pat had skill. Now, the Pat Verbeeks were going to geek. Pat Verbeek was this guy that had skill, and he was tenacious. So you get that combo that they're going, wow. So take a, take a guy like me. Wow, he can, he can meet a deadline. And then eventually they went, wow, and he's not that bad on top of it. That's, that's the combo they're looking for. They're going, he's good, and he'll deliver it on time. Whew. We'll take average and deliver it on time, but his stuff's getting better every year. Woo, we'll take that. Yeah, he'll sacrifice his body. He'll go into the corner. He'll get the puck out. He'll score some goals, and he's going to grind it every All night. Right, look, I, I did an interview, and somebody said, you got any words of advice for creative people? Yeah, it's easy. Do it. Do it, right? Again, you, you, four people in a room, three of them better than you. Somebody says you want the job. Three of them don't raise their hand. You go, I'll do it. You are number one when you walk out to get in that job. Like, so, stop it. Stop thinking you have to be the best. Stop thinking that you have to have the most talent. Just be the guy that will raise their hand. I, there's a, and, if, and if you don't believe me, watch a movie called Shrek and go, why did he pick Donkey? Because remember, there were all the people there from Fairyland. And he goes, I got to go on an adventure. Who wants to come? And Donkey kept bouncing. Oh, pick me, pick me. Remember the scene? Yeah, I and do. he's going, uh, anybody else? And I'm sure everybody else might have been more skilled than Donkey, but nobody voted volunteered so guess who we had to take donkey right so, so donkey got to go so just do the work and you may be donkey who's the greatest comic book artist uh, ever in in the same range jack kirby jack kirby jack kirby how many books a month was he doing sometimes five and six yeah. books a month nobody outworked jack right jack how, how many books were you doing at your height uh, look at here's 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 my height, but it was also my low point. It was my high point and my low point. I did, I there was one time where we were doing Spider-Man bi-weekly. I was I was I was penciling and ink in Spider-Man bi-weekly. So Ooh. so remember that's 20 pages to pencil, 20 to ink. So that's 40 times two is 80. And then they gave me this book called Invasion that I was doing. It was a miniseries for DC, and I did that. So I was doing 100 pages a month when most people are doing 20. So you can either say, wow, Todd, you're doing 100 pages. I don't. In hindsight, it was a, it was a glowing moment to say, never, ever do more than you're capable of doing. Because what ended up happening was all 100 pages suffered. So did I get them done? Yes. Were they great? No. They were just, did I hit my deadlines? Of course I did. But, but I, I looked at those pages in hindsight when it wasn't my best work. So I vowed after that to just. You can hardly tell they're your art. Yeah. I mean, some of them, well, they had to bring some inkers on some yeah, of them. Yeah. Right, yeah, yeah. I've had them. And yeah. I'm like, this, you know, it's like, oh, okay. The that's why, stuff. That's why yeah. I like to ink my own stuff. So this is something so, I wanted to show you. That okay, I do it. This let's, is the, let's geek out. Oh my God. Splash to X Men 4. Wow. And speaking of Jack Kirby, wow. I wanted to show it to you because no one else was going to show you something wow. that you could truly. This is the best gift I've ever gotten. Wow. <laughs> Thank you. You can have it considering this is a high res copy. The original is I'm in a kidding. safe. I'm but I wanted to show it to yeah. you because, uh, I mean, Jack's a hero of mine, and, and, you know, no one. 
like you have to learn the rules to break them. You know, no one no. broke those rules. So, like Jack did. so it's interesting. People say, "Well, where'd you learn from?" Jack right. Kirby was one of the names, and they go, and they look at me sideways. They go, "What? You don't draw anything like Jack Kirby." I didn't learn drawing from Jack Kirby. What I learned was staging and melodrama, and, and action, right? And right? and the storytelling. Action, yeah. So even on this page, where's the camera? Right. Even on this page, here's what he did. Brilliant. Yep. He's got he, he's got, got the foreground, foreground element right here. So this guy's doing something. So you get the action here, and then he also has to basically now establish that there's an, more than just one person in the X-Men. So he's got all of them right here, and he's got the leader that's all set here. And the angel, besides him standing there, is flying. So you go, oh, the angel actually flies since he's got wings. Let's put it all in here. He got a ton of information. You don't even have to really read the stuff to know what's going on other than the plot. So Jack Kirby's storytelling was impeccable, was impeccable. Right. And then the dynamics of what he did along with people like Gil Kane, that, mm -hmm. that to me was... To me, he was my guy for action in terms of like drawing. Oh, oh yeah, that's yeah. interesting. How, how do you realize when when you're young and you're just looking at this? How do you realize all those elements there? I didn't. I no, did. I, I was. I was. No, you no. You had the sense no, of no. an artist back then, and you realized. I did I, not. I did, no, it it, it, it <laughs> penetrated you. That's how I saw it. it, it Look at no. I'm gonna tell you. I was, I was as guilty as everybody else. I looked at Kirby stuff when I first broke into comic books. I was collecting. Remember, they used to do some of the reprints. Oh yeah. And I go. What? That guy can't. Wonky. It's one. He doesn't draw as good as John Byrne and George Perez, and it's all it's all goof. Yeah, whoever. I go. It's not realistic. He's got squiggles in the knees. This is ridiculous. And then as I got older and I understood and I got into the business, mm -hmm. and I go, wow, it's not about the squiggled knees. It's about conveying the story, and making clear what the story is. And I go. <gasps> Jack did it every, who cares about whether the, the it, it's all there. And I've seen other people that draw spectacular, but I look at their pages and go, I don't know what's going on. It's confusing right. it to me. It doesn't have that hook that draws you in. Well, the storytelling's like right. yeah. the, I, It's that simple. You can draw and not have good storytelling. I'm tired of that. I would rather take simple, s simple drawings and good storytelling. You know who's also, I would put in that category. I don't mean simple in a bad way. Frank Miller. Frank Miller is fantastic because he just tells great, clean, clear stories. You can that argue can be all translated day. from the comic book to the movie screen, right? Shot by shot, storyboard by storyboard. And you, know? you, but you could argue that his drawing, his anatomy, wasn't spectacular. No. Okay, it didn't matter because he engrossed you so much, and engaged you so much to what was the story that it didn't matter that his drawing wasn't perfect, right? right? Like, you guys are missing it. You guys are missing that you have to engage people in stories, and if the pictures are pretty, then that's the gravy, right? People right. keep coming in thinking that the pictures are pretty, then somehow that will cover up the flaw of the storytelling. It's not true. From my perspective, it's not true. Awesome. And, it's, and, it's, and it's, it's lacking a little bit because one of the things that's frustrating to me is that in the last 10, 15 years, the writers are writing full scripts mm -hmm. and, the, and the artists are now just doing what's in the script and they're not learning the storytelling. They're letting the writers tell them what to do. So when they work, sometimes they come work for me and I give them like a rough outline. I don't do full script. They don't know how to do storytelling. I got to start working through storytelling because they've gotten into bad habits because the writer's been doing all. It'd be the equivalent of the screenplay writer telling Steven Spielberg where to put the camera. Mm -hmm. Duh. No, not going to happen. Well, again, so. I've represented artists that, that work with Bendis and work with some of the, and Jason Aaron and the top writers in the business, and 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 I see that. Yeah. Absolutely yeah. see that. Because they're so good. They're, they but are here, great But here's what's interesting. Writers, I, was at a but, you know, I, I was at a convention, and they had this panel, and you should have seen it. It was cool. It was like all these dudes, like Frank Miller and, and, and Adam Kuber and, and uh, Greg Capullo and a handful, John Romita Jr., they're all awesome. And they're all up there, and it was called like the Masters panel or something like that. And, and all of a sudden, it dawns on everybody at some point that every one of these people that are up there, all these artists that are given the words of advice, all grew up under one method, what they call the Marvel, the method, Marvel method, which was you give them three pages and they turn it into 20. And every one of these people that you're looking to to basically help teach the youth all grew up on that method, yet you as a corporation are not using that method. So at some point, the bell went off a little bit. I've been talking to Greg that, that, that they're saying they're letting some people do the Marvel method, which is weird. The DC comic books is using the Marvel method, but Marvel isn't using the Marvel method. A little irony there. So if these are your masters and they learned in, a different, in one kind of tradition, 
why wouldn't you use that tradition for the next generation? It's bizarre to me. It's bizarre, but name's Todd. You have the, the John Romita Jr. who learned from his father that was a very hand-me-down, uh, he learned that method in his house. Look at, you know, at here, home. Okay, so let, 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 let's bring, oh, let's bring it back to me for a second. Okay, sure. You think for one second that if I drew Spider-Man on a full script that my artwork would have looked like it looked? You think somebody would have written on a page, Todd, make the webs look like spaghetti. Yeah, that sounds good. And then make them look like a cowboy guy with a... And then make sure that he comes out of the panel. And then make sure, make sure, make sure... All the things that made McFarlane artwork, my style, eventually, you think somebody could have written that for me? No. So we each came up with our own styles on our own. You had to fight with those those uh, middling sort of personality editor guys. Of to, what storytelling was, right. Yeah, so, so to I, make yeah, that I happen. Had, I fought the whole way. But I'm just what saying that, <laughs> that it allowed me to bake my own style yeah. that ended up serving me well. But all these people up on that stage that day served them well. Why wouldn't you let the youth do the same thing? You could have another John Romita in the making in in your in your stable you could have another frank miller in your stable or todd <laughs> thanks mom so or todd uh why wouldn't you want that or greg Capullo, why wouldn't you want that why wouldn't you want to repeat right. the same method why wouldn't I, you let the, anyway. those guys like you say you don't want to spend 12 hours by yourself in a room drawing and not be able to entertain yourself no, I, I, right i don't know name's todd only rhymes with god i don't have all the answers today <laughs> <laughs> Do you uh, you want to take us through the booth real quick? Sure. By the way, um, going back to the memorabilia kind of collecting stuff, I, you know, I, I think you're right that uh, it's hard for uh, people to certain people who aren't collectors to understand why you'd want a hockey stick from you know your favorite hockey player that's game used and why that means anything, or you'd want to collect any of these collectibles. But for us, it's what we want. Yeah. Here, here's here's what it. I, here's what it does for me, and I don't know if it does for you. Or I think, but I think there's a lot of overlap. There's, you know, when you look at like photo albums, and you open it, and then all of a sudden you see a picture, and you go, oh my gosh, and you flash back to that moment because you hadn't thought about it, and you see the picture, and it's just reminiscent, and it brings you to. That's what a lot of this is, because you go, oh my gosh, I, remember that TV show? I'm going to buy a character from it, right? Oh, remember that was my favorite player. I'm going to buy a jersey. It from gives it. you a feeling. It, it it takes you back somewhere in time that make that was a good a good time in your life, right? And you go. So it's it's a bizarre way of taking a snapshot and just rejigging some of the memories in your in your mind. Going, I used to eat crisp and quake cereal, and they're standing in front of me, and I know it's irrational. I'm 50. I shouldn't buy it, but I ate crisp and quake when I was six, and I gotta just have these here because I like crisp and quake. And I think it tastes kind of like Captain Crunch, but it doesn't matter because I like what those guys look like, and I remember I used to get the free toys. That's it. It doesn't have to be any more complicated than that. I, I think that's it, 100%. Um, so this is the Game of Thrones. Right. So walk through some of this uh, pretty quickly, some of the stuff we've got coming out, some of the stuff we've got uh, down the pipeline. Uh, we've got the Game of Thrones coming out. Uh, this will be releasing in April when the, uh, the the next season, season eight, comes out. So, we, you know, we try to coordinate it when people are sort of on their high of one of the brands. We try to release it at the same time. So we've got, you know, some of the characters. You know, I'm, I'm a big fan of monsters, so, we, you know. We've got this guy right here, the Night King. He's cool. Bringing some of the dragons back. We're gonna we're gonna bring some of the dragons that people like. So that'll be coming out uh, season eight in April, July, uh, season three coming out. Uh, Stranger, Stranger things. things. So we'll we'll just keep pushing this one on as it as it comes out, and everybody sort of gets excited with it. And then we go into sort of interest and odd little corners. Sometimes we just do stuff. Because it's just fun to do. There's a bit of a nostalgia to it, right? Mm -hmm. So, right, David Bowie here. We came out with our first one here, Jareth, and when he was the Goblin King, and and it sold. And we and made some more, and it sold, and we made some more, and then we go, ah, you know what? He more, he wore more than one outfit during the film. So now we're gonna do another one of him, and you get a little cool little guy here. The hair is awesome. If you get in close, it's super awesome here. And we're going to do him, try to get the likenesses of it. We've been doing for a while, uh, like anime and manga and stuff like that. So we're going to continue to do all of that. So we've got Naruto, uh, One Punch Man is cool. Hero, my Hero Mac Academia is starting, the, bu the buzz of that one's starting to grow, right? So we got this one and, the, and, the, and getting good feedback here at the Toy Fair. This one's coming in here, but... 
I mean, even if you don't know what it is, that's cool, right? I mean, again, this is the thing I keep telling people. Never underestimate, even if you don't know the logo, the cool factor, because we were all seven or eight-year-old one time, and you were walking down the aisle, and a lot of times you just pick stuff because it just looks good. Mom, can I get it? It just was a robot or a gorilla or a car that was purple with flames. I don't care what it is. These, these costumes, this guy looks pretty good. Who doesn't want a guy with a hand across his face here? I've got a five-year-old Jack, and, I mean, he would go, oh, that's awesome. Well, what is it, Jack? I don't know, but it's awesome. It's awesome. Oh, right, and that's not even painted. Wait till you get the, all the colors on it, right? Again, never underestimate primary colors on any kind of plastic good, right? It all works. Do you still oversee all of this? Yep. Yes. Yeah, yeah yes. You know why? Because every one of these boxes has got my name on it, right? And so I'm going, dude, you're not putting something out that I don't get to sign off on because at least if they don't like it, then they get to blame me, right? And so I don't want something that is out there that I wouldn't buy myself. So, Is there ever a time that something went out and maybe it didn't work yeah. out and you went back to yourself, well, maybe I didn't give it enough time. I yep. was running around with the kids and I just yes. didn't look at it good All enough? All the above. All the above, right? Life, life and making toys is a very imperfect sort of exercise and so do I have some toys that turned out way better than I thought they would yes and do I, do I have some that turned out less than I had hoped for yeah you know I I think the neuroses of being an artist is what keeps you going and drives you because you, you you when you see something great you go so it's possible but the thing that really drives you is the one that didn't turn out good and you go I'll never let that happen it's like striking out with the bases loaded I'm going home and I'm practicing and I'm never going to strike out with the bases loaded again you don't worry about the grand slam that you might have hit two weeks earlier it's the strikeouts that embarrass you so you go I'm not going to strike out anymore we're going to get up there and do it I so, play poker and it's the bad beats that I remember not the big hands right. that I won no, only the bad beats so Mortal Kombat, Hollow Knights, Elder. This is, you know, some of the cool. Can videos. I ask you something yeah. about the Mortal Kombat? That's a cutout that you have in there. Yes. That's art. Now, does that take you back to your original toy show where you just did the cutouts yeah, so in your boxes? Right. So let's talk about. Look at when I went to my very first yeah. uh, toy fair. I had a box and a cutout. This is it. What you see here is all I had in a six by six booth. I just had this. So about and this I'm much space. Yes, yeah, and I'm just That's trying. Cool. I'm trying to flog, and I what got. What character was it? Spawn. Spawn. Yeah. Yeah, 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 Spawn. So I, I started the company based on Spawn. So I go, okay, we're going to put it out here. And, and people are going, you got any prototypes? No. But it's going to be really cool when you see it, right? So I was bad at it. And then here's what I tell people, because I, I, I talk to groups with the business. You, you have to have dumb luck follow you every now and then. And my, my dumb luck, my dumb luck was I'm in the 6x6 booth in a room that had 20 to 30 6x6 booths. And at that time, going back to 1984, the biggest toy buyer was Toys R Us. And the buyer of Toys R Us walks into the room and it's like the Pope, and there's a hush, and there's a hush, and everybody stops, and it's like, and, th and then it became like a, like a general, and then everybody snaps for out front for inspection, yeah. for inspection, <laughs> and you, and it was, I was, I didn't, I didn't know it was my first toy fair, and I'm watching everybody, and they all jump out in front of their six by six booth, at these, and you're like, okay, you're gonna stand to attention until they tell us to relax, and then the Pope comes, the general comes, and I was down the hall. And I'll never forget it. I mean, to this day, I just saw. And as he walked by you, if you didn't stop, he wasn't buying anything. They deflated. They deflated. Right? I, yeah. I'll never forget it. I'll never just go, no, no, no. And the people behind him, as he kept coming closer to me, it was like, oh, my God. And then for whatever reason, he stops in front of me. Now, why did he stop in front of me? Now, this, mm -hmm. for any of you that are listening, this is dumb luck, and you have to have this as a steady companion. Did he stop because he was a, a comic book geek? Of course not. It was an older man. Did he stop because he liked fine art? and detailed toy. Of course not. I didn't even have a prototype. Was he a geek? No. Was he a collector? No. Why was he there? Because standing next to that man was a 22-year-old assistant. And the 22-year-old assistant was a comic geek. And he turned to him and said, Boss, this is the guy I've been telling you about in the character that's at the top of the charts. And he, the boss, was way more practical. And he just said, Can you get it to me on this date at that price? 
I didn't know, but I said yes to both those questions. Always say yes when opportunity knocks. Oh, of course I can. Open and, the door. And, <laughs> and, they, and he said, if you can do that, I will put you store wide. Now, remember, Toys R Us store at this, That's at a this thousand moment. thousand stores? Uh, yeah. Two thousand? Uh, yeah. It was, it, it, Everywhere. Again, and they're uh, the biggest toy it. buyer. All of it. So now, here's where the dumb luck starts to domino. Now, all of a sudden, couldn't get uh, a meeting at Walmart. Now you get to walk into Walmart and you go, I just thought I'd tell you that your major competitor sells more toys than you. Is putting this thing in called Spawn and every one of their stores. And their answer is, oh, what do they know that I don't know? Okay, I'll take it. Right? And then, and then you go to the next one. You go, now Toys R Us and Walmart. And it just becomes easier and easier. And next thing you know, you're in and you're going worldwide with a cardboard cut out because if that assistant next to him is collects anything other than comic books, right? Then you go, maybe I'm only at Toy Fair for one year and now we're talking about something else completely. I don't know you, but these are these moments you just have to have. So so I don't have to be the most skilled. You just have to get a little bit of those forks in the road to go your direction. That's an amazing story. Thank well, you so true. much. It's even it's, true awesome. on top of it. It's phenomenal. And and it is, I've, I've heard it before. Yeah. It's wonderful. Uh, and I think it's amazing that people can get their start here at Toy Fair and, and look at what we have here today. Well, well I, I would say I'd be even more encouraged so anybody's got an idea out there, if you can rustle up the idea. I think ideas, everybody's got them. The money becomes a second part. But there's an equalizer right now. It's called the Internet, right? And back when I was starting, if they didn't put it on their shelves, there was no real outlets for me. I was going to be done. I was going to be done in that first toy fair. But now if you walk around here and everybody, all the big people come and say, I don't like your toy. I'm not going to do it. Who are you? You're a nobody. You can still go and build a website and sell it direct to a consumer and you can cut out all like we live in a world where we're we're all it, it's kind of all equal all to some degree and now if you can hustle put out a quality product at a good price who knows every now and then one of yours will bubble up and you become the next hot thing it's cool it is it's pretty amazing uh you you do a lot of licensing now um yeah. i met your licensing lady before yep. do, do you does she come to you and say i think we should license this or do you go out and say I think we should license this, or is it a combination? It's a, it's a combo. So we're, we're always looking, and then because of our reputation now, as you, ma as you can imagine, the first five years, I was doing all the door knocking, and then eventually they went, hey, isn't that the guy who does that? We've seen some of his product at the store. They started knocking. So now after 20 years, it goes both directions. We're always sort of looking, but we also get knocks on our door saying, hey, we've got, you know, Either a contract's coming up, we're going to move in a different direction, we've got a new idea, we've got a new TV show, you guys have any interest, you want to put in a bid. It doesn't mean that we're going to get it. Sure. it just They're just sort of gauging our interest in some of it. And, and so we've been fortunate enough now that our street cred is big enough that the phone rings on a steady diet. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So, again, video. So, so video stuff, Borderlands, Call of Duty, been doing that. Right? Look at this one. If you guys should get in this wow, one. What detail. This, this guy's Amazing. cool, right? Again, I know, you don't like Army stuff, whatever, but that guy looked good on the desk. That guy would look good on the desk. I don't care where you're at. He'll look good on the desk. Right? Great. Destiny is always looking. Here's the thing about Destiny, which is awesome. And I, and I had Destiny people in yesterday. I go... The thing that's cool about Destiny to me the most, which is different than something like Call of Duty, Call of Duty is going to sell because you got this logo, because you know you got a lot of people in, in sort of normal clothes. This one, I could hide the logo, and I could still sell a decent amount of those toys because they just look, look cool. they look like cool robots. And if I'm a seven, eight, ten year old, I would still buy that. Going, I don't care what it is, Destiny, Demetri, I don't know what it is, Mom, but I'm buying it because it's a cool robot. And then us geeks will go, ah, oh, it's good looking and it's Destiny. That's a combo. So. We got, we got that coming. Um, this one was a surprise. This one is a little bit of a surprise, right? Now, again, it wasn't, it, it was this steady, we put it out, and then they went, oh, it's sold, can you get us more? And we put it, and they go, oh, it's sold, can you get us more? Now, again, no, they never ever took like a giant bite at any one time, but if you take a lot of small bites of an apple, eventually you're at the core and you're finished, right? So so this guy just been sort of the, just been chugging and hitting, this is Ichiro, this is a lot of singles. Next thing you know, he's got 264 and he set the record. Record, yeah. and you're going he's pretty good right here this this is this was our King Kong here for a 
couple of years, right? It's still going strong. Uh, this little tiny app game that basically blows up and gets giant. Um, and so we sold gobs and gobs. And in some cases, some of the stuff we were doing was in the top 10, sometimes the top five with the Lego stuff, right? They're the, the 800 pound, they're so big, you can see how big their blocks are right there, right? So like, that's how big they are. Their blocks are 800 times bigger than mine. You can just see them floating there. So I look at them all day long. But um, I think there's an opening, and I keep saying that in the in the construction aisle. I'm, I'm picking up some fun stuff. This is one we're going to pick up. Uh, King Features and, and the Syndicate are, are, have this game as an app game. I don't know if you've seen it. It looks a little bit. If you saw it, like it appeals the, to me the ste- being a Steam, Las Vegas kid. The I'm Steam, like, no, it's but got the Steamboat Willie. If you look at that yeah. old style, old uh-huh. like Popeye style cartoons mm-hmm. from way back when, when none of none of us was alive. But it's just this funny look that now it's becoming so retro it's kind of hip cool and then the and then the thing that was fun is that the people that we were licensing from literally did new artwork for the boxes so that so this is original artwork that they did so that it would fit the size of our box wow i go wow dude that's cool and then, and then, even if you don't know what it is, who doesn't want a little funny little guy that that's got a head for a cup, right? I a just coffee it's, cup for a head. It's goofy. It's goofy. Makes you smile. And it's yeah, it's got little Mickey Mouse sort of colors and stuff, big eyes. Like, it's fun. It's fun stuff. Uh, he dice, so yeah. And then, and then you've got Fortnite. You brought Fortnite into the fold. Fortnite, right? So we got this little game you guys might have heard of, and we're all crossing our fingers and hope that it actually gets popular out there in the world. Every now and then you get lucky, right? And and Fortnite is this thing that's turned into a phenomenon, <laughs> literally a phenomenon. Were um, you in early and, on the license? And, yeah, we were. Yeah, right at the beginning. I mean, I, I, like a lot of big licenses, they don't necessarily license at the beginning, right? We were there. They didn't do it at the beginning of uh, Walking Dead. They didn't do it at the beginning of things like Halo. And and they didn't do it even with things like Destiny and that. And then eventually they go, hey, we got a smash hit. People are asking for it. There's a bit of a, a hunger for product. Why don't we go do some licensing? And then we basically come in the back door and we basically get some. So some this is big cosplay stuff. But the fun stuff, you know, our sweet zone, if you will, is over here, which is sort of, you know, our cool premium premium action but figures. The big cosplay stuff is super cool, though. Oh, yeah. Wow. What are you talking about? The big slurp right behind you here? Who doesn't want yeah, that, right? Exactly. Exactly. Like that's cool. Who didn't hang that up on your wall? It's awesome. Um, but what, the other thing we're doing is, a, I don't know if you guys have seen the game here, but at the end they do these goofy dances. Played the game, yeah. Right, yeah. they do these goofy dances, right? So we got the, our toys now got all this articulation so you can put them in all these goofy poses, all these goofy dances and stuff. So not only can they look realistic, but you can also put them in the goofy dance poses if you want, uh, and they'll, they'll go good. The extra articulation we did so they could go into those, all the reviews have been, oh my gosh, McFarland. Because one of the things that people would hit us up on sometimes was we weren't putting enough articulation in our figures. Part of that was my bias of going, I wanted to keep the reality of the figures as close as possible. Super detail. Because yeah. you have to give away some of the reality, the 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 replicating of what is actually on screen if you put too many joints in it. But the customer is saying, we don't care. We'll take less reality and more fun. And so we go, okay, we'll end up doing it. And then you start giving them variety with scale. So we've got, we've got some stuff that's a little bit bigger here. You know, some would come with props. Here he is with the, with the shopping cart. I love uh, the glider. We got the, the yeah, the, gli- that, yeah, the glider. So you got, you know, you got all the gliders that are coming down. But you can buy the glider, get your favorite character, put them in there so you can go like that. But then this thing not only shift from left to right but it also shifts here and here so you can make it look like he's banking and turning and you don't have to take it out and turn it whatever else you can just do it as you want so anyways a little bit of I know it's for us geeks older geeks but we can still have a little bit of fun with it so there's some toy kinetics in there and then and then they've got some vehicles they said they're going to be actually getting bigger vehicles and having more fun with them we'll make sure that we get all that coming down the pipeline get them as sort of fun and, and cheap uh, and, and value-wise as we can. We continue to do sports, right? So football, uh, basketball, uh, we've been doing now, it seems like for almost close to 20 years. Uh, we just got back into in a hybrid deal with the distribution of hockey and baseball again. Nice. I'm, I'm consulting 
back with them on the art side because because uh, although the ones we're distributing are pretty close to what we were doing, they're still, to my eye, go dudes, like we, we can get these better. We can, and so these are really good. I still think we can get better, right? As a guy who played at a high level, I played Pac-10 baseball. Right, we can we can nail these even even better than we've got, and and then some of the hockey stuff with some of the fun stuff that's there, and then on on uh, Monday we announced uh, the Harry Potter license. Yeah, I was going to ask about that. So the Harry Potter license, we did that on on Monday, and it's interesting because there's been this resurgent in Harry Potter licensing people wanting to buy. It's 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 interesting. It was like, I call it near nostalgia because it's not that long ago. But you know that yeah. group is coming into their own, you know, with their jobs but, and but being in spending. But every has these ebbs and flows, right? Yeah. And and but a couple of years, are, a couple of years ago, I can't, you know, if we had put out Harry Potter, I don't know that we would have got the response we're getting now, yeah. where they're saying all the retailers are coming in saying that they're Harry Potter, which is you know the Wizarding World, because it includes everything, not just Harry Potter, but everything. Uh, that they're saying that everything in the stores and retail is 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 going up. It's not like there's any new Harry Potter movies that are driving. I mean, there's a Fantastical Beast stuff, but again, you know, nobody's going to say... It's those kids that are 20 years older now. They're in their their late 20s, early 30s. They're having kids. You know, they're they're enjoying that with their children. Well, here's what I I would say. I don't care. They just want it, so yeah. I will serve it, right? right? I just, I'm my my father-in-law used to say to me is a very wor- good words of wisdom. He used to say, "Todd, why is a cow? Basically, don't worry about it. It just is a cow. Stop it. So don't ask reasons why. If people want it, deliver it to them. Give it to them. Don't try to figure it out. Only." Only to the interest of can you replicate it and can you sustain it, that's the information. But if they want purple balloons with X's on it, don't ask why, just sell them purple balloons with X's on it. So we're going, so so there's an up on Harry Potter and it's like, why now compared to maybe two years ago? I don't know, you you could probably fill an hour show on the reason. I'm just going, they're hungry, feed them, right? We're gonna do it. I had a question on the Harry Potter stuff, which you probably can't answer, so it's okay if you can't. I'm going to do it. Are are you, so I know that the wands are very popular, especially kind of with electronics in them and stuff. You don't traditionally put electronics and stuff. Are you going to do some kind of wand or some kind of wand specifically with electronics? In it? Um, not not a wand in and of itself. They have a license for somebody who does it, and I wish I had it because they sell millions of those wands, as you might imagine. So I'm like, I'll do a Newman. I didn't. I got there a little bit too late. So they have people that are filling that. Can we do it within the confines of our toy, so that when they go and you move the arm up, the contact comes, so it looks like it's glowing now and it's casting a spell. Yep. Right. So. There, we're we're going we're gonna to present some of these crazy ideas. What we want to do at the beginning is just come out with the product to start with. Gauge what the interest is, what they want, and then and then create different price points so that you go, okay, for some of you want to see something a little crazier, it's going to cost a little bit more because, again, you're putting in more parts, you're putting in electronics, then, then we'll give those out there. The same would be true that on Tuesday when we announced another license, both of these from Warner Brothers, uh, the D- DC Multiverse, it's the same thing there, right? They're, they're saying, Todd, DC Multiverse, if you got a crazy idea that's in the confines of your contract, bring it to us. We're not saying we're going to do it. We're not saying we're going to approve it. We're not saying we're going to let you make it. But don't stop yourself from thinking, bring it, right? Which is which is super encouraging to a guy like me who just has 100 ideas every day. Is it ever tough when you have this great idea and you bring it to them and they go, we're not going to approve that? No. No, because because I know who the client is and who the boss is at all at all times, right? It's their brand, right? If you came to me on Spawn and you wanted to do something and I said no, that's my prerogative. I own it. So, no, I, I, I understand who's in the ownership and in the power position. That's their brand. They know better than I do. All I can do is give them my reasons for it, try to convince them, trying to give some education to why I wanted to do it, why I think the audience wants it. And then sometimes they go, oh, I didn't know that. Okay, cool. That sounds good. We didn't, I, you know, we didn't know anybody wanted that. But if, you know, you're going to get an order for X amount, yeah, cool. Go and try it. Um, but I, no, I, I, I never get frustrated 
by people basically raising their brands the way that they see fit, right? I, I do it. I do it myself on my own brand. I have, I have a perfect example of that in my artwork business, of where I have to buy originals. Now, I, I oh, you turn to your camera. Come on, turn your camera. This guy's working hard. I'm looking at you. You're a very handsome man. Oh. It's like it works. For me. That uh, you know, I need certain characters. So there are fans of certain characters, and JSA, for instance, as part of the multiverse, where the multiverse kind of started, where they brought back the golden age characters to make Earth 2, right? Yes. You know, those characters are very popular. I mean, the Golden Age Flash, and when they contemporize those with the JLA, JSA guys, and then it's spread from there, I'm often looking for, like, pages that have, you know, those characters on it to feed the... Okay, so, so right. And I love it, and I'm as geeky as you, and I get it, and I'm going to find those characters, and I'm going to put them in the corner. But that can't be my game plan, and here's multiverse why. Multiverse is here's... part of that, right? Yes. It's an extension. Multi as far as I know, multiverse is everything. It, it is sounds everything. like, because right. I keep asking, can I do this? Yes, can I do this? Yes, yes, How yes, 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 yes. Yeah, no, no, but I go, can I do animation? Look, yeah. Can I do video look? Yeah. Can I do TV look? Yes. Uh, uh, comic look? Yeah. Movie look? Like, yeah, 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 yeah. And Todd, if you want to design some stuff yourself, go ahead. The right? monster so, look. Right. So you go, there's lots of stuff, right? There's lots yeah. of stuff that's there. Here's all I'm saying. I'm a geek. I like comic books. We can geek out all day long. Let's take a look at, it, at the world, though. And this is where now I have to unplug emotion and what I like personally, and I have to act like a true CEO. I know the sales of Aquaman. Aquaman, if everybody who's buying Aquaman comic books today went to the movie, that movie would have made a half a million dollars. Right. Right? Yeah. Every guy who bought, bought Aquaman gave $10 with a half a million dollars. It made a billion. Yeah. Which basically tells me that 95 to 99.9% .9 of people do not read comics or are not geeky like you and I. So what I need to present, I think, is I need to present stuff that will come across to everybody as cool, has a good value, as quality, and if within that box, underneath it, it happens to be from a cover or an issue or a look that you and I can geek out about, that's bonus stuff. But what I can't do is bank on the DC Multiverse being successful for me based solely on completist and or comic book people, it won't work, right? There's humanity, I gotta sell, I have to sell to humanity, why? Because you see movies like Venom and Aquaman that are making a billion dollars globally, and the vast majority of it is international, which tells me, I'm telling you right now, they're not reading Aquaman comic books in the English language in Monaco. But they're selling a lot of tickets to that movie, so I have to sell to humanity. So how do you do it? You just make it re instantly recognizable that it's the character, and then you give them different v v looks of them. Let's take one. Uh, I like... I'm a kid. I like Flash. Okay. I'm hoping at some point, either at all at once or over time, but I'm going to give it to you. Do you want the Flash from the comic look? Do you want the Flash from the video game look? The Flash from the cartoon look? The Flash from the TV look or the Flash from the movie look? Or even, hey, they let Todd create a cool costume too. Pick whichever one you want, depending on who you are personally as an individual, how much money you want to spend on it, and which one of them work, as long as they're all cool and they all are instantly recognizable as Flash. I, I, what I don't want to do is just this one super highly detailed, excellent sculpting. That's what I'm known for. I'm going to do it. I can do it with my eyes closed, one arm behind my back. We're going to do it. That one's a given. I want to then also do some of this other stuff that brings a fun factor into it so that I can deal with humanity. And so when somebody comes by that isn't a direct fan of that comic book look or that movie look, they still go, Flash, I love Flash, boom, they're in. I don't care how they like Flash. I don't care when or what one of those six buckets they, they fell in love with them. Is, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give them the opportunity to buy all of it. Awesome. Todd, thank you so much. You've been amazing as always. It's uh, fun hanging out. Yeah, I appreciate you coming every year. Good to see you. Good right? See you. Keep I hanging. I want to show you one yeah. more thing Look, before oh, we go. One more thing. This is like one of my pride and joy pieces of art. This is actually another the gift, original. Another gift nah. for me. This guy is a giver. Yeah. He's better than Santa Claus. Yeah. Have your checkbook here. <laughs> we can work it out. But this is the... Uh, the, the oh, my gosh. Yeah, Marvel's John Romita Sr., Marvel Superheroes are here, poster art for the Black Light posters. That was the store display only art. They didn't sell this poster. It was just in the standee, right? Right, so then we've got Stan Lee autograph. Yeah. 
got who that Herb Trimpey? Yeah, Herb, Herb Trimpey, yeah. who did the Hulk when, when he was younger. Was we got Joe Sinnott, who yes. to me inked the best, the best thing, thing ever. the best thing ever in the Fantastic Four. Looks like we got John Romita, who did the classic yeah. Spider-Man. Yep. That, and that's, that, this, right there. This is all his art, yep. actually. So yep. And you can see yep. the Spider-Man is perfect. Yep. And he's got that protruding foreground foot. Right. <laughs> you don't have and any of Todd's early oh, artwork? Yeah. Dunna, dunna, well, there you go. Dunna, dunna, dunna. Oh, look at this. Brought this look, look at, 300. Here's how old we are. Where's your camera? Here's how old we are. I did, I, when I started doing Spider-Man, this was after doing a couple years with at DC and stuff. Mm -hmm. I jumped on a book, uh, 298, 298. Uh, and, and eventually we get 300 and you get this thing. And this Essentially, this story was, how do you get this damn black costume off Spider-Man, right? So, Dave and I had to come up with the character visually. I just go, I just go, right. I got to I gotta get this damn costume off. I'm not drawing that black costume. We'll just create this character called Venom. I don't know if it will amount to anything done so I could draw a black. So, this is the happy accident issue of us just getting the costume off. Because I go, I'm not going to draw Spider-Man unless you get that costume off. Venom comes as a byproduct of that. That's Me so just awesome. being... I just go. I don't want to draw. I don't want to draw that. Co I don't want to draw that costume. I want to draw red and blue with with webs in it. And so Venom is just a byproduct of me being stubborn, right? If I was a nice, passive, good employee, I would have just come on, drawn it for three years. They probably then would have retired it. They would have gone back to the regular costume, and there would never be a Venom, right? Wow, it's just, what a cool story. It's, well, it's, it's happy accidents. This is why you just sometimes they go being a rebel, being crazy, trying to push. Sometimes turns into some good stuff. It's not all crazy stuff. Um, but, so but, who but, had the symbiote in their head? No, it was the the the, the costume was alive from Secret Wars, okay, right? So Jim yeah, Shooter was right. see yeah, Jim Shooter. Yeah. We're gonna geek out. Jim Shooter was the editor in chief, right. and he had something to do with the Star Wars or the Secret Wars bring the costume. Oh, yeah, so sure. when I said get rid of that stupid costume, he we went, well, Jim doesn't want to, and Jim's a big boss. Yeah. So I go, well, we'll just come on with another character. This is easy stuff. Come on, we'll just rip it off him, put him on some other one. I'll, I'll give you some designs here in a couple days that end up being Venom, right? Here it is. Yeah. Good. Now can I draw Spider-Man the way they want? And every time we brought that character back, Venom just got bigger and bigger and bigger. But to add to it, I've now been around so long that I did Spider-Man for a while, did some other stuff, left, started a company called Image Comic Books, created this character called Spawn, and in August, Spawn 300 is coming out. Wow. I will now be, I'm now having an, an amazing Spider-Man 300 and a Spawn 300 that's you're sitting do there. An homage cover? Uh, I already did, but I'm gonna have to come up with something. But yeah. here's, here's why it's even more important to me besides we're gonna get the movie out. Is is that is that when issue 300 comes out it ties the record 301 to me is personally way more important it breaks the record for the longest running independent comic book in north american history not only is it an anniversary book but it is the longest running not corporate owned book in the history of north america congratulations that's amazing it, it takes a long right but do that do it look at it takes Cerebus? a long it takes so yeah, it takes a exactly. long but it takes i'll tell you how long it takes ladies and gentlemen my daughter because I remember the day my daughter, I, I finished the last two pages of Spider-Man, not this book, but Spider-Man on my run. Two pages when my daughter was born. My first daughter was born. I, she was a couple days early because I would have had it down perfect. I would have finished it <laughs> and I would have quit Marvel and I would have done, done it. That daughter, I just visited her yesterday. She lives here in New York City. She's a doctor. She works at Bellevue Hospital, right? Oh, wow. So it takes from the time you have a child to them becoming a doctor to get to 300, there's no shortcut. Wow. There's no there's no overnight success to get here. It took a lot, a lot of years. Actually, took more than two decades. So, it's it's a grind. But you know, if you like what you're doing and you got you got enough free sort of control over your own life, which is why I don't ever want to get too big. I've I've intentionally kept my company small, because and I've had offers to get bigger. But it's just I like the freedom of of the smallness of it. Then you can do it, and all of a sudden they've got way more gray hairs on the other side than I do, right? And I'm going to outlive all my enemies. It's my yeah, one goal that's in life. revenge. Is I just want to be able to look at all their graves someday. Uh, how do you explain, and do you, uh, that your yin-yang of being a creative artist and a businessman so balanced and so strong that you've had such success in this business with your creative own projects and with all this material and all this creative stuff, how? How? You know, I mean, you know, uh, you can say Jack was a great comic no, 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 book artist, no, 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 but he's no, a horrible I, businessman. Easy. Didn't take care of School himself. School hard knocks. Yeah. 
school hard knocks. So where does that come so, from? So, so when I was working at Marvel, DC, whatever it was, there was the executives up here and there was the artists here. And I was the rebel, right? I was like, yeah. you know, power to the people, right? And I go, we're going to take down the corporation. We're going to take down the executives and that we, the artists, should be in charge, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, that was it. That was my theory. And then as time went by, I went, wow, that's letting the inmates run the asylum. And so I go, as time went by and I was doing, I go, it's not that you want them to lord over you and not that we should be lording over them because you'll make every sort of business decision wrong and it'll go into bankruptcy. It was this. That what ended up happening was not that they should be on top of each other, but they should be co-equals. And that if you have good people that you have value in that are doing the art and doing the creative and giving you the things that you can now hand to the business people that can now get it out to the consumer and that there's a simpatico that you both understand that without the other side, you're nothing. Both sides yeah, are nothing. Symbiotic. Then you go, that's it. So I have to do it within my own business that every now and then I have to remind my sculptors that this person who's working in accounting or, log or logistics who gets the containers from China over to America on a timely fashion is just as important to our corporation as you sculpting because if you sculpt it and we can't get it out and get it here and get it onto a store in a timely fashion, they will never give us any store space because we will be not, we won't, we can't, they can't be counted on mm -hmm. and, and they're never going to give us any work. And so there, it's, it's there. So either you learn that piece, I consider myself to be bilingual. I can go yeah. into a, a meeting with a banker and I can talk business yeah. and they think I'm a CEO who knows art. And when I go to the artist, they think I'm an artist who understands business. Uh -huh. I don't it's care. Also their boss. Right. I don't, but <laughs> I don't care. Amazing. Well, I might go in some other yeah, big okay. meetings too. Well, but did but you learn I, that and how it shook out at Image? I'm or, just saying it took. It just took time. Yeah. Right? I was an artist when we started, and you just learn. You either, you either, when they throw you in a pool with sharks, you either first learn to swim and second mm. how to avoid sharks, and either that or you get swallowed up. So, I just was a fast learner, and I just wanted to survive. Right? I'm a warrior. I'm a warrior. I don't know why. Some of us are built different than others. Look at. But you were a competitive athlete, and you were competitive. I everything think, you did. I think that goes along. I, th I was just wired to be competitive, right? and it never stopped. I From relate the day to that. I walked yes. off the baseball field, it you had never to compete stopped. In something else. When they said you can't break into comic books, it's like I, the hair gets up Bulls. on the back, and yeah. you go, "I'll show you. You can't do this. You can't." Like, what are you talking about? I'm like, a, I'm like a 16 year old saying, "You can't stay out past midnight." Of course, I did. Yeah. I'd always come in at 12:15 just to see what the reaction was to mom and dad, right? Because if they didn't do anything, I was going to stay out till 12:20 the next. Time, right, so I'm. I, I don't know why. It's, it's like that scene in Major League the movie when uh, Rick Vaughn gets cut. Wild thing gets, yeah, yeah. thinks he gets cut, but he, they're playing a trick on him, and he walks into the manager's office. He says, "Every time I pitch against you, I'm going to shove it up." Right. I, I mean, that's that's the attitude I have. Right. No, no, no. There's there's never a day. I look at. There's never a day where I think anybody is better than me. Intellectually, I know they are. Skill-wise, I know they are. Corporation-wise, they've got more people and more money and more effort. I know that. But I won't, I won't lay down for a second to them. I won't for, for one second, even though I know I'll lose 90% of those battles. But I can't, you can't ever go into the ring and go, I'm going to fight and not think you're going to win the fight. Like, why get in the ring? Well, he's twice as big, then don't get in the ring. So you get in the ring, you assume you're going to win even if they're twice as big as you. Mm -hmm. Right? I don't well, care. Baseball's them. loss was the world's gain, and, and, and uh, Todd McFarland well, look, that has let me brought also tell all you, this there, wonderful a product fine and art line to the world. Between delusion and tenacity. So, and I border on both sides of that fence. Well, so well, I can't. Todd, enjoy. you're you're awesome. Thank all you. Right. Thank good. you for doing it. Be good. You be Thanks, good. Sir. You're right. terrific. Yeah. <laughs> you're the terrifics. There's an ending right there. He's Anthony. There you go. He's Todd. I'm Michael. Thanks so much for watching. Check out more on beterrific.com. And until next time, be terrific.